What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do a Q&A. So this is episode two of the Q&As. Every week I do a Q&A at noah.cavanaugh on Instagram. I post a Q&A on Monday Pacific Standard Time in the morning and then I allow about 24 hours for that to run through. I put all the questions together and I'm going to answer them on YouTube because I think it's an awesome extra video for you guys, some extra content and we get into everything football, mindset, all that stuff. So thank you so much for submitting your questions. Let's hop into it. All right, so question number one which boots are you going to wear when you start training so I've got my computer right in front of me guys no worries there what boot are you going to wear when you start training now this boot is very special to me for two reasons one is it is definitely one of the boots that I'm going to be wear when I start training and it's also a boot that I will never wear probably ever let me tell you about that this specific boot is the messy special edition these are the ones he won the Copa America in I probably will never wear these in my entire career but I have a pair of the black ones coming and those are one of the boots that I will be wearing when I start training more intensely. I've already worn the Predator Accelerator remake for a little kick around in some coaching sessions so that's been fantastic but again those are the X Speedflow Point ones and those will be on my list of things that I'm going to wear. Question two, how do you plan your nutrition during a tournament showcase with two games one hour apart? I love tournament showcases and I think that is awesome. Thank you so much for that question. Fantastic. Fantastic. It is really difficult. What I would say, liquid calories go down the quickest. And if you can get lots of carbs and some protein in, I would do it immediately after. The other thing you can try to do, if you can stomach it, is go in between games. So if you're, or in between, excuse me, halves. So if you have a halftime that's five, 10 minutes long, get some of those energy chews in you or get half a banana or something. Just be doing as much as you possibly can. If you've only got two games in the one day, I think you can be all right with a little peanut butter banana sandwich or something or a smoothie with protein or some other type of carb some banana and peanut butter again those are great options some protein bars all that stuff as soon as you end that first game and then you get into the second game as it goes on um, and you can eat energy chews and whatever else and then obviously make sure to have a really good nutritious meal before the two games and a, and a fantastic nutritious meal after especially for your recovery as you cool down as you do all your other exercises so that that's definitely something to consider. All right, so question number three is, when can I see you? Anytime you'd like. Loki though, shout out to AB from LA Force. Love that guy. Question number four, what is the best boot on the market for number 10 slash winger for dribbling, in parentheses, Kaka style, passing and penalties? Well, I gotta be honest, dude, it sounds like your game is a little bit limited. I would say that you need to work on a lot more than those things. But what I would say, I appreciate you hanging with me as I roast you a little bit. What I will say though is pick the boot that fits your foot the best. It is most important when you're looking at boots to buy and or boots to fit on your feet that they fit really well when they're broken in. Obviously out of the box, if they hurt a little bit, that's pretty normal. You got to break them in, especially for wide footed players. There's almost zero boots that I can wear without having a little bit of break in time, but it is very important that you find boots that are really good for you right out of the box and it will make you be comfortable playing 10 slash winger and dribbling Kaka style passing and penalties. Question five, how are you going to feel taking the boot off and putting the boots on? This question was from a really wonderful and special human being who I spent Christmas with in Australia. I'm not going to name any names, but if you're watching this, you know who you are. Love you so much. Thank you again. Can't wait to see you soon. And I am absolutely thrilled. The first time I put the boots on, i.e. for those of you who don't know what they're referring to, a pair of football boots, it was one of the best feelings and I just got shivers because I was so excited to put those on and start juggling and passing a ball with some people and it absolutely made my day and I know that all of the work that I put in to get to that point to get to the next point in my career is paying off because I've been patient, because I've done the work, because I've done the diet and all that stuff as well. Thanks again, love you lots. Okay, next question. How stoked are you? So stoked. Okay, next question. And this one's actually really great. I actually really like this question. So I like all of them. So thank you all for submitting. At Noah.Cabinaw every Monday, Pacific Standard Time. Comment down below. How do you measure your fitness? Now, this is a really interesting question because I know there are a lot of measurement tools. My watch measures a lot of stuff. You can get GPS tracking units that measure a lot of stuff. You can get the Aura Ring, I think it's called. And then there's Whoop, which is that strap that you can get. And there's, you know, you can test the, I don't know, the oxygen levels in your blood 
head. A lot of professional teams will do it through your ear just because it's pretty painless. But that is something that is oftentimes overlooked when you're looking at the pro game. So a lot of players will not measure a lot of stuff and then they'll get to the point where they want to play against other players and the other players have had tracked metrics and have done a really good job of building up and up and up. So something that I would say that I measure is more, I measure RPE, so rate of perceived exertion. And that has to do with every single training session I'm evaluating in my head, okay, this was supposed to be a seven out of 10. So hard, but not insane. And a seven, six, seven out of 10. And if I get to the end of the session and it's like a four and I still have a ton of energy, I've got to figure out a different way to train that specific session, whether it's upping the weight in the gym, doing an extra couple sprints on the pitch, doing an extra couple drills, maybe making sure if I'm in an actual training session with a team that I'm doing extra runs in behind. Um, all of that can be a metric to be used. The other thing that happens though is oftentimes as you get much fitter, you run into lower RPEs, which allows you to push yourself more. So I would say RPE is something that I look at and then I measure things like weights in the gym and obviously you can see pretty clear projections and uh, the way that you move up in uh, your gym lifting, things like a, sp a sprint. So if I do, if I want to do 1842s, which for those of you who don't know, are probably the best thing you could possibly do for your athletic ability. And I'm sort of being sarcastic because they suck, but they're amazing. I love the feeling of 1842. So you've got the whole pitch here and you run, you get 18 seconds to go all the way across the pitch from end line to end line. Then you got 42 to get back. What is 18 plus 42? You got it, 60 seconds, which is one minute. So you have one minute, you have 18 seconds there, 42 to get back. And at peak performance, I should be able to do, I mean, this is crazy types of fitness. I should be able to do 25 of those back to back. So that is a lot of running. Usually I'm sitting anywhere between 17. And so that's like, and that's a, that's real. I mean, that is outrageously fit. Those are something that you can measure metrics. I don't really measure a ton of uh, blood pressure all that other like really nitty gritty stuff. I don't really measure sleep either. I kind of go on off of what I feel most of the time. I don't have an alarm and I know I'm an early riser, which what that means is going to bed around 9, 30, 10 so that I know when I wake up at 5, 45, 6, I'm good to go. I've got eight hours of sleep. And if I feel not so good, I really listen to my body. And if I don't feel so good, I'll take a nap in the middle of the day and then I feel brilliant. So that's kind of how I go about it. I don't have a ton of like really nitty gritty measurements. I've had really nitty gritty measurements at training. So at Fremantle in Australia, we had those GPS trackers and that was awesome. So we could track a ton of sprints and stuff and, and exertion and stuff. And the coach was able to monitor how much load he was putting on the players, which was great. So I really appreciated uh, coach Cameron. So Cameron Lord, uh, Dr. Cameron Lord, actually. He was an awesome, awesome coach. So really appreciated him for doing that. And he was really knowledgeable of that, that stuff. But personally, don't do a ton. Final question of today's Q&A. How do you present yourself to your new coach when you've been injured for the first two months of him being in charge? First impressions, exclamation mark. That's a really interesting one. So being injured, being signed for and or recruited for a team, you know you're gonna play there, but how do you make a good first impression? So. My biggest thing is you gotta show commitment and you gotta show the willingness to work really hard. So those two things are super important. So if you are absolutely keen on going to every single training session because you know that it'll tell the coach, hey, I'm here, I'm committed, I'm ready to work when the time comes, that is a huge deal for coaches. Obviously, if you've got a career ending injury, a season ending injury, which you, I know this person who made this question, they don't, so you don't. So you can go to those training sessions and I know it's tough on mental health and it's really important to keep your mind strong. Go to those training sessions, encourage your teammates, become a leader off the field, study football, get all those things sorted so that when you get back on the pitch, you know exactly what's going on in your position and on the field at the same time, okay? The second thing is you've got to show your coach, here's what I'm doing every single day to get better. So I'm doing my rehab, I'm juggling when I can, I'm passing the ball when I can, I'm going to doctor's appointments, physical therapy, Cairo, PT, all that stuff. Really getting whatever, whatever the path looks like for you, making sure that you keep him in the loop about the particular stuff that you're doing because it's so important that the coaches stay in the know about what you're doing because it'll tell them and it'll through you obviously that hey, 
I'm putting in this work, I'm doing what it takes, and I'm gonna get on the pitch and I'm gonna succeed for your team and help your team win. So that's the biggest two things that I would recommend you doing. That's it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that Q&A. Again, Mondays at the, in the morning on Pacific Standard Time at Noah.Kavanaugh on Instagram. Go hit that follow on IG. Make sure you look at the stories on Monday and you'll be able to see the Q&A. Pop your questions down below and then I'll answer them on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. I do one every week. I throw the video in somewhere in the lineup and we go from there. So again, as always guys, be awesome, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.